Welcome back. Joe Baklovic and Peter Meyer joining us. All right, we have this yield debate, uh, you know, that, that we will get into. But, Joe, the question a lot of farmers are asking right now is, we had this massive hailstorm go across the areas of Nebraska, Iowa. I mean, we had some large crop damage this week, but the market seemed immune to that news. Why? Well, first off, you can't quantify it. You can't quantify how many acres and how many bushels were damaged or destroyed by hail. Similarly, you can't quantify what was damaged or lost in the floods that we saw in Northern Iowa, Southern Minnesota, Wisconsin, places like that. The trade can't quantify it. And I think the trade is is very clearly given the action in the market. The trade is of the opinion that it just wasn't big enough. And maybe that's wrong. Maybe down the road, you see acreage adjusted lower. Maybe the yield losses in those locations are enough to, to drag the national yield lower. But on the flip side of that, you've had essentially perfect weather over the last week in parts of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Ohio, places that caught the rains when it was needed, uh, like perfect timing, perfect placement. Um, there's going to be record crops in a lot of areas of, of the eastern Corn Belt. So the question is, you know, do the big crops out east, um, are, are they able to offset what uh, could be lighter crops in the western Corn Belt? Pete? Joe mentioned it. We had crucial rains this week from the hurricane. You think it's going to be a negative thing, but for the eastern Corn Belt, it brought some much needed rain and a lot of areas, including Tonkin Farmers in, in Illinois, it soaked into that soil. So when you look at the rain coming at such a crucial time, I mean, how big of a crop could we be talking about this year, Pete? Joe and I talked about this about three weeks ago and Joe put me on the spot and I said I'd be between 178 and a half and 179 and a half. I'll stay there. Uh, I'm not a I'm not a 180 plus guy at the moment, but you know, I'm certainly, certainly no chance of being below 175. And as far as the acres are concerned, I've reduced our acres by 250,000 in corn and 250,000 in beans just because I had to do something. So, you know, outside of that though, you know, no reason to change the bean yield of 52 USDA. You knew they weren't going to change the corn yield of 181. Can I go higher from here? Eh, but Certainly, we have to think about 180 in the picture. Okay, so if it is 180, Joe, what's your advice for farmers right now who have a lot of crop, old crop, still stored in the bin? I don't know if I have advice. I can't fix a bad uh, price, but I'll tell you this about the balance sheet. I think the production side or the supply side of the balance sheet, like your acres and yield, that is uh, much less interesting to me than the demand side of the U.S. balance sheets. I mean, given everything we know today, the pace of export sales in particular, USDA might be overstating corn and soybean demand by like hundreds and hundreds of millions of bushels. And that's a big, big problem. It's a big, big problem. So, I mean, the corn yield could be 180, it could be 176. If we don't start to see an improvement in export demand, especially in soybeans, but also in corn, I mean, I don't know that that, that two, three, four, five bushel difference is necessarily has to be super bullish if, if it ends up on the lighter side. All right, Pete, Joe, thank you for joining us. We need to take a quick break and then we'll have Tractor Tales next.